Many Americans today may not realize that the area from Texas to California was once part of Mexico. Thus, when the United States acquired the region in the mid-19th century, there was already a Mexican population living in the region. As Anglo-Americans, English speakers with British heritage from the eastern United States settled in the region, they came to dominate the region politically and economically, and discrimination against Mexican Americans became commonplace. Soon after the United States came to control the region, the new territorial governments began refusing to recognize land titles granted under Spanish or Mexican rule, meaning that many Mexican Americans lost their land. Over time, Mexican Americans came to live in overcrowded urban areas called barrios and attended segregated public schools. They were routinely excluded from juries and discouraged from voting by poll taxes. In 1929, several Mexican-American organizations joined together to fight discrimination through the formation of the League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC. LULAC offered English language instruction, helped non-citizens apply for citizenship and prepare for citizenship tests, and also challenged segregation in the courts. In Mendez versus Westminster in 1947, a federal appeals court ruled that Mexican-American children could not be segregated in California public schools. Shortly after the ruling, a new California law ended segregated schools in that state. LULAC also won a Supreme Court case challenging the exclusion of Mexican Americans from juries in Texas. Latino farm workers also pushed for better lives. Labor leader Cesar Chavez founded the United Farm Workers, which campaigned for better wages and working conditions. Under his leadership, farm workers went on strike demanding recognition of the union. Chavez called on Americans to support the strike by boycotting grapes. Pressured by a successful boycott, the grape growers agreed in 1970 to improve wages and working conditions. While persons of Mexican ancestry are the largest group of Latinos in the United States, Latinos in the United States come from many different countries. Puerto Rico, for instance, became a U.S. territory as a result of the Spanish-American War of 1898 and Puerto Ricans gained U.S. citizenship rights in 1970. But Puerto Rico only has a non-voting representative in Congress, and Puerto Rico citizens residing in Puerto Rico still cannot vote for president. Cuban Americans comprise another significant Latino group. Many Cubans arrived in the United States as refugees following the 1959 Cuban Revolution, with another large influx coming in the 1970s. They formed a large community in Florida with smaller, significant pockets in parts of the Northeast. Other Latinos migrated from the countries of Central and South America and the Caribbean islands other than Puerto Rico. Latinos in the United States have risen dramatically as a share of the U.S. population, a trend that is expected to continue. In 2000, there were some 35 million Latinos in the United States, or about one in eight of all people residing in the country. That number rose to 50 million at the 2010 census and is expected to rise to nearly 100 million by 2050. Latinos make up a large share of the more than 10 million undocumented immigrants to the United States, that is, individuals living in the country illegally. Illegal immigration and the status of the undocumented immigrants have been a contentious issue, particularly in the early 21st century. Many Americans support deportation or forced return of these individuals to their home country, while others argued that these individuals play a vital role in the economy of the United States and should be allowed to stay.